systems in which uh, we use L'Hopital's rule. But if you remember, even other indeterminate cases can be reduced to these two. Can be reduced or, re or changed or worked into uh, to 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. It's just a very easy method. The reason why we did not discuss it in Chapter 2, we could not, because we did not know how to find P prime of X in Chapter 2 or Q prime of X. That's why we didn't discuss it. But if we know how to differentiate, we can discuss limit even from chapter, uh, uh, L'Hopital's rule on limits only f even from Chapter 2. But we couldn't because we did not know how to differentiate. So it's a very powerful method, very powerful, of solving or determining limits. But only in these situations and only for the other ones when they are transformed into these two. Good, very good question. Next, anything else you would like? Uh, is this clear? Was this the question or did you have something else? It's clear for what I mean. Okay. So it's just making our life easier. I couldn't make your life easier from chapter two, sorry. But we never waited till chapter four. If you remember, we introduced this in chapter three, way before it appeared in chapter four. Because it was a very useful method, and in chapter three we already knew how to differentiate. The moment we we um, uh, knew how to uh, apply differentiation rules, I next thing I did was L'Hopital's rule. I didn't wait till chapter four. Good. Other questions? Anything you would like to work on? Oh, what was going on here? I didn't do anything. Sorry about that. Web assign chapter uh, 4.7. Okay, 74.7. So uh, question 13. Can you give us yours or should I? Do I, I need? Can. Um, a fence eight feet tall runs parallel to a tall building at a distance of four feet from the building. What is the length in feet of the shortest ladder that will reach from the ground over the fence to the wall of the building? Excellent problem. Round, round to two dozen. Excellent problem. Okay, so let me repeat this, and you, you follow, because uh, I'm so sorry. I was grading, and I just ran out of, uh, of time, and I wasn't ready. My apologies. I don't have WebAssign up, so um, in the background, I will, I will turn it on. But uh, I want to answer this question first. So here we have x, which is unknown. But we want to determine the minimum x. So we have, we have a building. Correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe I missed something. And if I did, uh, now please call, correct me. So we have a fence that is parallel to a building. So the building is here. And this fence is 8 feet high, 8 feet tall. And it runs parallel to the building at a four feet distance from it. So we want to know what is the minim minimum uh, um, length of this ladder that we need to um, be able to reach over the fence and touch the building. Am I correct? Was, yes. this, was this the problem? Do we have anything else? Is there anything else given to us? Nope. No. Okay, so this is a typical situation. Where I have 8, I have 4, I have this is x, I have this which is y, and I have this which is w. So every time you see something like this with two right triangles, 
a smaller one and the bigger one. Then you will think immediately of of what? Um, uh, I can't remember the phrase. Okay, um, I'll help. Ratio, their ratio is exactly, ratio. similar. Similar. Terms. Excellent. We had this before in some other problem. Don't ask me right now. I will remember if I think about it, but I would like to finish this. We looked at similar triangles. And I remember it was, now I, uh, I remember perfectly, it was the Thruff uh, problem in which I was trying to determine uh, this piece, right? So forget about it right now, but I know exactly where we, that's at least one example. Okay, so yes, I will write proportions, but first I have to show that this is true. I cannot just say, they're similar, move on. No. I have to show that, first of all, they are right, tri right triangles. So this angle equals or is congruent with this angle. And this angle is um, the same, is a common angle. So that's sufficient. So I'll say two right angles and a common angle. I have to show why I consider this. And obviously this one must be the same. There is no other way. Because the sum of the angles in any triangle is excellent. So then if two of them are 90 and the other one is common in both, then these must be the same. So now, only now, I can write proportions with their size. But remember, it's very important how I write proportions. Okay? Very important. What I'm saying is, um, the top sides have to come from the same triangle. The bottom sides have to come from the other triangle in the correct order. So let's say I start with this angle, which is the common one. The opposite to the smaller, the opposite side in the smaller triangle is 8. The opposite side in the big triangle is y. I move on to the next. This, I have no idea. So I'm going to call this a. So opposite of this angle in the small triangle is A. Opposite of the same or congruent angle in the big triangle is X. And finally, I'm here. Notice that all these have to come from the same triangle. The opposite of this is W. And the opposite of this is 4 plus W. OK. Now, there is another relationship uh, in, in this triangle, which I have the Pythagorean theorem. The longest side squared equals the sum of the squares of the legs. And the other one is x squared equals y plus w plus 4, everything squared. So uh, can you, one more time, just read the, the final question to me? What is the shortest uh, ladder that will reach over the, uh, over the fence and touch the building? Is that what they said? Just, uh, Correct. I just. What is, the, what is the length in feet of the shortest ladder that will reach from the ground over the fence to the wall of the building? OK, very good. Estimate to two so they are asking us to find the minimum x. OK. 
So I have to find an equation now that only has x and one other variable. So notice now that I have x, I have a, I have y, and I have w. Gee whiz. So I have to find or create a function for x that is a function of only one variable, not of a and y and w. So I have to massage these equations somehow and get rid of everything except one variable. Once I have this function, I will differentiate it, f prime of whatever. I don't want to write anything, so f prime of whatever, whatever we come up with, equals zero, and from here, find the minimum. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four variables. I only have three equations. There is nothing else I can squeeze from anything else. This is it. So I have the um, similar triangles and I have the uh, Pythagorean theorem. There is nothing else. So now let's try and see how we can massage these. Okay. Um, if I... Okay, so one option would be to solve this equation for A. So A equals cross multiply, right? So A equals Wx over W plus 4. So if you multiply both sides by x, you get A equals Wx over, and I'm writing it in the correct order. Okay, now I will replace A in the second equation square it, w squared x squared over w plus 4 squared equals 64 plus w squared. Okay, so from here I will solve uh, for x. I'm just thinking, to, just to want to see if, if there is an easier way, because I have already x squared here. So if I solve for y, it's the same thing. It's not going to be a big difference. But I just wanted to see if there is an easier way. If I solve this for y over w, okay, and I plug it in here. So that's another option. I just want to see it before I start here. So w, so y will be 8 w plus 4 divided by w. And when I plug it in here, I have x squared equals 8w plus 4 over w plus w plus 4, everything squared. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Either I solve this one for x squared or I continue with this one. It doesn't matter. You choose. Here I have one more step before I solve for x squared first, right? So no matter what, I'll have a square root. I don't see any other way. I can solve for w and plug it in here. If I solve for w and plug it in here, I still have x squared. It doesn't matter. So what I did here, I solved for a, and I plugged it in. Um, I solve for a and I plug it in here, and I got this. In the second option, I solve for y and I plugged it in here and I got this. It doesn't matter really. It's the same thing. So you prefer to start with continue with one or continue with two. I wanted to see it and see if it's easier, but it's not. Which one? One or two? Your preference. One is fine. Okay. So then I will have to multiply both sides by uh, w plus 4 squared over w squared to solve for x squared. So 64 w squared over, uh, hold on, uh, w plus 4 squared over w squared and plus w plus 4, everything squared. I'm looking for my divide out. I don't like this here. Okay. So 
So this is gone. I have x squared. Here I have uh, that's correct. And here I have that's correct. OK, so I take the square root. You can say right plus or minus. No, because x is a distance. So there is nothing I can do here other than, oh, I could factor out. Oh, I could factor out y plus 4, and the square root would be y plus 4. And what do I have here? I have 64 plus w squared over w squared. So then x equals w plus 4 over w, the square root of 64 plus w squared. OK, so this is a function now. So finally, after debating and finding or choosing one of the options, so now I can call this a function of w, which is w plus 4 over w, the square root of 64 plus w squared. OK, so I have to find a prime. Now, from here, the whole thing is the same. So uh, do I want to differentiate this? I'm debating for a second. Um, it doesn't really matter. OK, I'm going to use the product rule. So this is the first function, and this is the second function. This one, when I differentiate it, it has to be um, quotient rule. The top prime is 1 times the denominator minus the top times the denominator prime, which is 1, times the square root of 64 plus w squared plus w plus 4 over w times 1 over 2, the square root of 64 plus w squared times 2w. OK, so let's see. f prime of w. This is not a friendly situation, I see, uh, where you're coming from. So this w with this w, um, the least common denominator will still be w squared times the square root of 64 plus w squared. So this one will be multiplied by 64 plus w squared. So it's negative 4, 64 plus w squared. And this one will be multiplied by w squared, so plus w cubed plus 4w squared. Yes, I agree it's an ugly situation. So the negative 4 times this will be itself plus this times w squared, which is w cubed plus 4w. Yes, I understand. And when we set this equal to 0, just the top is important. So I have w cubed plus 4w squared, but minus 4w squared, and minus uh, 256 equals 0. It cleans up beautifully. I did not expect this. I have to agree. So this is the cube root of 256. Is this uh, what? Is uh, 6 or what is it? 256 uh, power 1 third. One third, please. Okay, so it is approximately six point. You said two decimal places. Yes, two decimal places. So three five, and the measurement unit. Um, everything was in feet, right? If I remember correctly. Yes, everything was in feet. Don't enter it just yet, <clears throat> because I want you to remember that I still have to show. Um, and please remember to show this. So I'll say approximately 30. Oh. What, is, what is this? It's 6 point, sorry. <laughs> 6.35. So I have to show this. And I have to show that it's a minimum. OK. So remember, the numerator is this. When I plug in 0, I get negative. When I plug anything above 6.35, I get positive. I have to show this. That this is indeed a minimum. And if we are asked, um, uh, no, we cannot be asked anything else because that's it. It's not a different function. So the minimum uh, length of the ladder that will start on the ground 
um, and go over, reach the fence, the top of the fence, and also reach the uh, uh, the building, the wall of the building, is 6.35 feet. And let us know if they like the answer. I couldn't hear you, Sean. Or so uh, I didn't ask. I forgot to ask. Do I recycle these or any questions? Because I'm always hoping that you redo the problems we do in class. Well, that's always my hope. Um, professor. Yes. Um, um, I'm not sure six works. Can it be less than the length of the fence, than the height of the fence? Oh, what did I do? Oh, of course not. I just realized that you, thank you for pointing that out. So I must have done something. Good point. Okay, now I have to check. Problems I've seen in the class. No, no, no. It's just uh, who knows what I did. So um, A over X and W over 4 plus W. That is correct. A squared, 64 plus W. X squared, Y squared, 4 plus W. Ah! Oh! <laughs> but we didn't use this one anyway. So that's good. Because uh, I, I swallowed the two here. So it's X squared equals Y squared plus 4 plus W squared. Okay, good. So that is okay. 